Uh, hi guys, welcome to Designs. Um, <clears throat> the voice gets, is getting croaky, but um, I thought today we'd carry on working in Fairy Celebrations uh, by Clara Markova, and I'm using my Winsor & Newton set of 24 full pans. So these are kind of really big pans, they're going to last a long time. And and I think, uh, I think this is one of the best sets to go. Um, yesterday I worked fairly strongly with uh, spraying the colours so they were wet and we had quite brighter colours. Uh, but I do prefer, that because of the way these are drawn, certain colours appeal to you. And I just think these are very kind of whimsical, water kind of um the colors so i'm going to be working with them dry now this is still sticky i've had this probably three or four years it's still going to be sticky it's because these are really really good quality paints and the pigment is very very high and that proves it that the um the the different compounds or or um or or uh, not or, <clears throat> excuse me the pigments are made up of compounds and depending on how that reacts with um, the gum arabic if it's watercolor or if it's acrylic it's, they are all slightly different some are a little bit sticky some are completely dry and it's all to do with the chemicals um, and i bang on about the book that i bought um uh, that's at turn of the century which was um all about chemists telling artists how to paint because they knew what compounds did when you mix them with certain binders and certain watercolors so it's a really really good set the colors are gorgeous not particularly expensive um i don't want to go down the route of yes we have got to color for our sanity for the next few months but um you shouldn't be paying more than 30 pounds i paid 29 i've seen them for 50 and 60 um there is the 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 quarter pan one sorry the half pan one they're all about 25 pounds maybe 35 at the most so hunt about and try and get them it's a full pan it's going to last a long time and when we do this touch and go system we're only using probably a pin prick to a pinhead sized piece of color from any one color section. And so it's what I call my touch and go. So this really will last you a long time. And, and I love the fact that you can work in full color. So very strong, beautiful, strong colors. And even on this paper, you can see there's no mark at all. Maybe just a little bit. You can really kind of touch the green and then put a bit of blue on top. And so although we've only got two greens and four blues, we can really change our greens. Um, and it's just a really simple set, but it can do a lot. Uh, because as I say, I think instead of rushing out and buying expensive things, let's either concentrate on what we've got. Um, and this water-based product could work with pencils or pens, ink tens any water-based pencil or crayon which is fairly good quality then you can do this method oh hi sandy welcome <coughs> excuse me welcome to bunny designs hi sand pat, pat sorry guys brain's not quite in gear this morning i'm hoping it's it's kept my um my settings i think it might have done actually I haven't quite got to grips with the new youtube let's see if i can just straighten up a bit because i'm a bit cockeyed but like Alfie, there we go. And pushing it the other way. <clears throat> I'm only on my second cup of coffee this morning. Um, it's a bit silly, hubby walking in every five minutes, bringing me coffee and me touching the cups if I'm self-isolating. Self so because my cold's worse today, I've asked him to stay downstairs and he will be sleeping. My daughter's given her, her bed, so she'll sleep with the dogs downstairs. Because you can't sleep downstairs without having the dogs about. So she's volunteered to do that so hubby can go in her bedroom. Which looks more like my bedroom. It's more like a studio. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's get on without further ado because we don't want Yorkshire waffle. We want colouring. 
So I'm just going to be using my number one Derwent brush. Um, it does look dirty, but if you look, let's see if I can just catch that on the light. There's just the tiniest amount of water. Now, if we do this, you'll see. Oh, so I've got the light. I've got the light just. That's a bit better. <clears throat> if you see this, it's getting wetter and wetter. But if you just touch the tip, you're going to get barely damp. And this is what we want. So we're not going to be doing this unless you want full colour. We're just going to activate the tip. And that's why this number one brush is the best. It's the only one you can do on paper, photocopy paper. Wouldn't work on a Bible page, but I have done it and then I've ironed. Um, I might do that actually on, on my other channel on the <clears throat> Bunny's Creative Bible Journaling. Because this brush is so easy because when you're having to wash your brush out you're moving your arms up and down so this way you touch and go touch and go touch and go and the idea is you pick up a small amount of color and you manipulate it to give yourself a watercolor effect and then you can you know that by the time you've finished and you're down here you've hardly any color now, normally when I do it, uh, I'll get a baby wipe and you can, or a, uh, <clears throat> an old face wipe, and you can see there is a dot of colour we are wasting. Um, and that's about as much as I want to waste as a tight Yorkshire lass. <clears throat> Excuse me. The other thing is I've made a bit of a colour swatch. I've never made one for this because I do know these colours quite well. It's a traditional set. There's a lemon yellow, cadmium yellow, and then there's a cadmium yellow deep, um, cadmium orange. There's um, a cadmium red and a cadmium red deep. And then this one is um, a deep, cadmium deep hue. So there's three different types of cadmium reds, one slightly orangier and one slightly pinker. Um, but the cadmium red is quite nice. And there's in crimson, a paper, purple lake, French Ultramarine, of course, obsessive with that one. This is a very interesting one. It's called Intense Blue. And as you see, it gives the most awesome colour. It really is an intense blue. And it's a new colour to me, but I do like it. So everybody can be change their minds. <laughs> We've got cobalt blue and then, of course, my favourite, cerulean blue. If you want to make a cobalt, if you don't have these colours, um, just in a minute, I'll tell you a quick way you can make them from three colours, but best from my six colours that I love. And then you can go out and buy six colours. If you want to have a new set and think, right, I'm going to be here for a while. I'm at home. I can't do very much. I'm going to treat myself to six colours. You're not going to break the bank. And you also find yourself, right, well, I can afford um, a brush. Uh, these Derwent number one brushes, people are getting silly and charging silly prices. They're about eight pounds on their own. If you buy the set, it's about 10 to 12, depending on where you buy it. You don't want to be paying any more than that. It's a set of three and a tight Yorkshire lass says buy the three. One is a bit thicker. Right, it's all right. Just, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Right, okay. One is a bit thicker, and then you have um, a wedge. <clears throat> I told my husband we're going to text each other <laughs> um, because there's absolutely no point in him coming in when he's mixing with the girls. Sorry, guys. <clears throat> That's not self isolating. Um, so we can buy the six colours, uh, but it's a very good brush. Is this? You get a thicker brush, which is a number two, and then a wedge and yes i don't often use them but as a tight yorkshire lass it's only a few pounds more for the set of three and then later on when we do buy a watercolor book or we do decide we want to do a bit of watercoloring we've got two brilliant brushes that can do lettering and they can do all sorts of things so again as a tight yorkshire lass for this system i only use the number one brush but i would buy the set of three. Oh, and i've just found a blanket under there which is quite nice I've got the window wide open so there'll be dogs barking and birds tweeting. Um, I set the room up, my bedroom up, so it's like a bed sit. So um, I did this when I was 17. When I first went to college, I had a bed sit. And believe me, it was the box room. Um, but anyway, 
I digress as usual. So that's cerulean blue, sap green, viridian I'm not a fan of. Ideally, I would have a hooker's green, but if you if you combine, and actually it's growing on with this because we get the teals, and if we mix it with these two blues, we get turquoisey colours. So actually, it is a really good one in your set, and it's grown on me. And because it's in this what I call traditional set, if it's good enough for the old masters, it's good enough for me. Um, if you mix sap green with viridian, you get hooker's green you get a lovely forest deep green a, a dark leaf green um if you take it a step further darker you can get it to a holly leaf that gorgeous rich green so although we've got a kind of a paler green here um this viridian as i say is growing on me and if you combine these two you can get some gorgeous rich greens and then adding the yellows to these two greens and the blues to these two greens you change them again. So we've not got two greens. We've probably got 25 greens. And then if you think of the oranges and the reds to put in them, we've got another 30 greens. So you could end up with 100 greens just with this set. Very simply, one to one by mixing them. Because the orange makes them all olives. So then we've probably got about eight olives, different types of olive colours that we can get. So although this is a set of 24, we can mix the colours to any combination we like to get planet. And we can also, we have this tonal value. So this is with water because it's a watercolour. So we've got at least 10 shades here. So although there's only 24, in theory, we've got 250 variations of each colour. So we've got a beautiful pale yellow but we've got a very vibrant yellow. We've got a lovely soft yellow for a highlight there, but a really rich yellow here. The same with the greens, very dark green here, beautiful soft light green here. So every color is about 10 shades because of that strong pigment. So that's gonna give us 250 colors with just a water brush without kind of mixing any other colors at all. I hope that made sense, guys. Let me just see if I've got my chat proper, properly done. I think I have. I think I have. Um, <clears throat> so we've got the sap green viridian. Then, of course, in every traditional one, there's yellow ochre. Uh, this one is like uh, this one is called light red, but it's brick red. It's Indian red. It's a brick. It's a brick color red, um, and it's a very earthy tone. Even though it's a red, it's an earthy red. It's not bright like these. Um, the pigment in the um, raw sienna is very strong, and that's why it's want, doesn't want to dry out. Um, uh, burnt sienna, raw umber, burnt umber. Payne's Grey, and Payne's Grey is here. It's it's a very kind of like a dead flat colour, but I'm, it's growing on me again. Mixing it with the blues, you get some beautiful blue greys. Mixing it with the reds, you'd get red greys. So it's in the set. I'm not going to waste it. Um, the black, however, gives some slightly warmer gray tones and when you get down here mixing it with these this is when you get some beautiful shades so if you've got a tree and you want a shadow um you could add a little bit of black but if it's a, a leaf add a touch of complementary colors to darken them but i haven't ruled out these i've still used them because um I, if i'm using the touch and go system i'm not mixing so i do use them in that in that sense but normally when I'm mixing colours, it's very rare that I'm going to be using these two colours, but they're in the set, so there they are. Have you got any questions? <clears throat> um, so I've chosen, because we were working yesterday in Fairy Inspirations by Clara um, Markova, um, I think tomorrow I might work in the um, Colin Thompson colouring book with this set of paints. I think I'm going to try and be simple. Um, I'm also going to revamp my little colour book. And of course, that's going to give me thousands of colours with the touch and go system. But I wanted not people to go out and buy hundreds of pounds of things. Um, 
as I say, if it's the birthday coming up, Mother's Day coming up, ask for something that's going to work with us for the next few months. So I did, uh, because I was working quite strong here, um, I didn't want to waste the paint that was on the brush. So I've kind of used it here. So again, you see, we've got that lovely red, but then we've got this color and then we've had the green and I think I put it on here. So we've got that lovely, I'm trying to put that over there because it stops the white light thingy bob that happens. Perhaps it does. Um, no, I do need it on there because the thing is, I do look, let me see if I can get rid of that, spilling the coffee. Let me just go to the other way. How are we there for, for looking and things? And they've got to be comfortable. If you're not comfortable, you're not going to do it for long. So you need to be comfortable. You need to have um, a pot of water next to you that's handy, that you don't have to unscrew a little flip tops quite good. Um, everything's got to be handy because you might be doing this for a good couple of hours. So you want to be drinking as well. And then, as I say, I've made myself a coffee this morning. Because I've, I think I've got a, quite a bad cold because when I've when I go off tea, I've got flu. It's the only time I can't stand tea. And I had two cups last night and they were like poison. I had to throw them away. So it's a it's a sign that I do have a flu. Uh, so fingers crossed. Um, so where are we now? Right. So I'm going to I do love these lovely watercolor effects. Um, in fact, I've told a lie. I haven't got a watercolor effect on here. Um, I probably try and evolve into it because I normally do because this touch and go system kind of evolves that way. We've got some little sweet wrappers um, and there we can use the bright colours because a lot of this the, the illustration is almost realistic. So sometimes you feel that you want to do the realistic thing. Um so we've got these little fairy bugs as well. And I think, I keep saying that I think that's her dress, but it's across to her sleeve. So the first thing I'm going to do is her dress. And then I've got that out of the way and I don't make a mess. Because that is definitely her sleeve and that's her shoulder. But it looks like it's the it's the bug's shoulder. So we'll, I think I'm going to do her dress first. Um, and I'm probably going to end up going purple. This isn't the best purple, I have to say. Um, Again, if we mix these two colours together, the Elysian Crimson and the uh, Purple Lake, we are going to get um, a different purple. Um, but I think, um, in fact, I, I don't like that purple. I think I'm going to use Elysian Crimson. Oh, well, it'd quite be nice. So I'm going to wet the brush. I used this little thing yesterday and it's dried so and this this comes in the set, the other set that I was using so squeeze the brush I use this instead of a baby wipe because it was in the set of the ink tense watercolors so squeeze the brush and twist and you can see how much water is in there it's it's to there so it's about a quarter gone so we'll see what we are at the end. And that's, again, why I love this system. So draw it back either on a wet recycled face wipe, um, a baby wipe. Um, you can use kitchen roll, but it disintegrates and you get bits. And of course, this is a very simple, neat way to work. So bits are not normally into it. <clears throat> so I think I'm going to use Elysium Crimson. Again, I keep looking at these two colours. That's the purple. Not really because we haven't got any berries. We do have some lovely um, the bows. Sometimes you think of colours and sometimes you just go with it. Um, to have a bit of a variation, so I like to use a yellow, an orange, a red, a blue, a purple blue, a pinky blue. Uh, and then, of course, the trees are going to be a couple of browns. The leaves, different leaves would be different colours here. We've only got one leaf, so I probably will... Um, touch one colour and then try and touch another to just give a little bit of variation. And you still don't have to mix, but the mixing thing is there if I want it. 
but I do like the touch and go system. Um, and then that means that if you've just got your colors, you can touch and go. Um, and you don't have to wash your brush out. But having said that, this system would work. So any brush with a fine long tip, a rigger, draw back. And you see when I touch the color, I'm going to do the dress. So it's a pinhead if for a big area and a pin prick for a little area if you want a watercolor effect. Now, really, she should be upside down because I don't think I can do it, but we'll try. So gentle pinhead. And I'm going to go backwards. I'll go forwards this way. So maybe a good idea just to have a bit of a test. You see, I, I picked up a little bit there. So now I know it needs to be that little bit more. And I'm going to get a lovely deeper colour, which is going to disappear on the shoulder. And we've just got a little bit of variation. So and because it's a watercolour, you can just jibble again. We don't want to do it too much because I'm just going to do that one again, actually. I shouldn't do that again on a watercolour paper. And watercolour, sorry, on this paper because it's not... <clears throat> So now I need to do the dress. I think I'm going to cheat and do the frill first. Again, really, I would change the page round because it's very difficult to stay in the line. When you're upside down, but we'll give it a bit of a... Again, just a, a pinprick of colour. And then bring that down. And we have a little bit of variation. It's probably not in the right place, but it's easy, it's quick, and it's in the way, and it's and it's the job done. So that's fine. And then underneath the skirt, we'll just make that a block colour. I'm not creating a masterpiece, I'm just colouring very simply, very easily, and very cleanly. And that's what we need when we're stressed. If this was going to be uh, an art piece, then it have to, I'd have to work differently. But I'm not doing that. I'm just colouring in for therapy, for well-being, pass the time, chill, de-stress. That's what this is about. And we don't be messing about mixing colours and faffing about. We just want to touch and go. And so this little guide will help me feel that, yes, I've got these beautiful colours and even paler. Hope that made sense. So again, under there. And because this is a watercolour, you don't get You don't get any. Now, remember, this is Elysian Crimson. The, you know, this is the strong Elysian Crimson, but it's a, a pinprick. That's what I'm using. And because of that, I'm getting this lovely soft watercolour. So, again, so I have a bit of a highlight. So we could do the pillow next. Um, <clears throat> I do like this intense blue, but I think I might keep it for the sweets, actually. So um, that's the Lizzie and Crimson. That's the purple. That's purple. That's uh, French Ultramarine. This is the intense blue, and this is Cobalt. So if we just have a little touch of this. I'm trying to keep the little white dots. So, yeah, this is a little bit fiddly, but it's still quite a nice way to work. I have to remember. 
And by making a dot, if you can see one or two of them, I've got little holes because that's what I've that's what I've created. Oh, it's a beautiful blue, is this? Quite rich, but I'm hoping to get. And this little tiny brush, just activating the tip, it's not going to give you a flood of water because we're just using the tip of the brush. Whereas if you're doing traditional watercolours, it's, you know, you paid for the whole brush, use the whole brush. There's a little dot there because I just want to create a bit of a dark shadow there. It's very, very strong, as you can see. It was literally a pinprick. Um, this may change this book. The other thing is, yeah, I, it's now very, very strong. Um, I'm not going to stress about it. It's it's colouring. It's quite... Um, I'm wanting to do that. I have to keep my, my little dot because it keeps drying. It will dry because I'm not using it very wet. The other thing is, if you have a shadow next to a highlight, your highlight is lighter. And if you have a shadow next to a highlight, your dark shadow is darker. And again, just a touch. It is now. This is a pinprick, a pinprick of colour, and we may find we get. I'm quite a long way away from here. Actually, I can't see what I'm doing very well. <laughs> quite a long way away, but hopefully, as we go this way, we're getting paler. So this is almost the uh, the peacock blue. Um, so if you mix this with viridian, we're going to get some beautiful colour. Oops, I knew I'd do that. Never mind. It's so strong, it'll blot out. I did pick up quite a lot there. I'm trying to keep the little white dots, but I'm not doing very well. Because I am quite a long way away from here, so I might lose that, that shadow, but I could put a little bit in there. It is a gorgeous blue again. It's not one I would normally pick. And I'm not sure if you could make that with French Ultramarine because it's it's a, it's a pure pigment, so you may struggle to get that colour. But it's very similar to cobalt blue, but not as bright. If you see, that's cobalt blue. But the reason it's like that, um, you can get this colour by mixing French Ultramarine with Cerulean. Um, but I might try and mix the colours, actually, because it'd be quite interesting to do. And I do have a little bit of pale blue on here. Um, oh, so I'm going to get a bit more pale blue because I just need to do this quite dark because it's underneath. I want to think a little bit about shadow and light, but I don't kind of want to get that hung up about it. Um, I think we've got all that. Now, the other thing to do is, of course, I've just realised I've got the tassels. So, and this is almost a peacock, that beautiful peacock blue. I would think that's what that one is. Uh, French Oak Marine and a pinprick of colour for underneath. And then that one and that can be paler and then when I come down here I have kind of and it I've got a line here now if it was ink tense pencils or blocks it wouldn't move but I can move this not a good idea to scrub too much now um you just want a, a pin prick to kind of bring a shadow because this one does want to be behind the other one. So we'll just do that. A 
eventually there will be a little hole like here. You can see these little holes appearing. This is the dots. So this is how it's working so far. I say it's very, very strong. Again, you've got to be a bit careful wetting the page too much because it won't like it. A bit of a thing on there. That's one. I do have a bit of a highlight, so that's quite nice. Hi, Kenny. Welcome to Bunny Designs. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are on the planet. Um, it's it's turned out to be pale and bright <laughs> this one. Um, but again, I don't want to get hung up about it. Yes, it's not what it was going to be. So if I touch this now, you see there's a touch of blue there, a dot of blue that's wasted. Um, but the only time I would clean the brush is if I was going up to the lighter colours. If I'm going down darker colours, I wouldn't bother. It's just the the um, the lighter colours. I don't want any blue in because it will change the colour. Um, so she has a little bug. I think I've got most of the dress. Um, it's a good idea to try and work high up because then you're not putting your hand on it. Not that it matters too much because it's dry. Again, that's another thing. It's just, it's it's one of those things, especially that one. If I put my sweaty hand on that one and my hand got warm, then it would smudge because it's a very vibrant colour. There's a lot of pigment in there. If I put my hand on this one, probably nothing would happen. Um, if you really want to be careful, you can get um, a piece of paper and do it this way if you want. I'm not that precious. Um, but again, it depends how you want to work. Again, this particular way of working is touch and go. It's simple, it's easy and it's clean. Um, and it works fast as well. That's the other thing. Um, and it doesn't put any strain on your hand because all the stress is in the little bounds of the bristles. Uh, and the Alf Master is doing his Alf Master thing. I think I'm going to do the sweeties. I think I'm going to... Um, now, I could either do them a gold colour. Um, I used the red for the bow. I might do the bow next. I know it's not at the top, but I think I'm going to do the bow next. I've just realised the bow matches the the bow matches the material of the. No, I'm going to have to do the bow, I think, blue. Because it matches the material. No, there's dot, it's maybe snowing or it's bits. No, it doesn't matter. It's not going to be. As I say, I don't really want to get hung up on this. I want it to be just so easy to do. I mean, you want to make a good job of it, but you don't want to get hung up on, I'm going to spend 60 hours on this. Um, the, the, the Harry Potter ones with the pastels took a lot longer. So again, if I just put that out there. I can always go back in and, and, and put the creases in if I wanted to. Um, but I don't want to waste that with the wisp. Um, I say just off white, it isn't actually white. It's a cream colour, but it just takes the starkness away. And again, it's it's quite enjoyable. You are concentrating to a certain degree, so you're taking your mind off things, um, and that's what we want. We want relaxation. Um, you can talk to people while you're doing this. Um, I 
I just put a little bit more down that one. Again, you've got to be a bit careful wetting things white. I've got enough to kind of go up there and give that little bit of material. I think we'll put, I'll change this one slightly. Just a slight different colour. Again, really I should change, turn the page around, um, but that would drive you all nuts, but you, you should change the page around because I will go over the line doing it this way. It's, it's almost impossible not to. Oh, hi, Darla. Welcome. Good afternoon. <laughs> good morning or good afternoon. Welcome to Bunny Designs. Having a bit of a play in this, uh, this thing. Now, because it was a big area, I have a slight bubble. Um, if you can see there, it's just slight, but it, it's it's almost, and there's a little bit there. I'll show at the end when I move the thing across, but it's very time small amount and that's because I went back into it I would wet it and I went back into it so I think I'm going to do the uh, tree next again I'm going to look at the browns it's upside down it would help it was the right way up um, I'm going to look at the but I might cut these out actually and make them on a smaller piece of paper that I can keep in here um, what did I say? Browns. So I do like the uh, raw umber. I'm quite a fan of raw umber, which is that one. So I did have a touch of red on there, but because it's going very dark, it's very rare. It should hold. So again, I didn't redo the brush end at all, so that it's still got just a, a minimum of dampness. Oops, wrong one. It's raw, raw umber, not burnt umber, but it's fine. You're going under there. So, in fact, I think I've changed my mind because I need a paler for the bugs. Yeah, no, we'll stick as we are. So that's raw umber. Again, stay at the bottom, and we might get a little bit of a highlight. But then the the bug and the little girl will fairy would create a shadow anyway so and of course it shows that we want a slightly bigger pin prick to pick up this color because it is a paler color whereas the blue one was very very intense and again that's another thing get used to your get used to your colors if you have a first page if you have a first page try to use every single color because then you'll know how every single color reacts um and then you, you don't get any surprises then you know with a little touch of water i mean this was like working with uh, with hydras and uh, peerless it's very very strong but it does say intense blue. Because I would presume um, attitudes have changed. Normally that would probably be indigo blue. So I'm going to get a bigger pin prick now because I do have a bigger space. Squeeze the brush a bit. See if we can activate that. Oops, see I've got a blob there. I should have had a blob. I'm going to have to go somewhere else now. A 
a couple knob. Still want some kind of highlight if I can if I can get one. Now it's wet, I'd have to be a bit careful because I would like it to go to almost nothing. Um, so I want it dark because I'm not going to start up there. I should go under here first. And of course, the other nice thing is that you've you've highlighted the sweets. So we've done this and now we know exactly where the sweets are. So we can, it stops us making a mistake. And that's a tassel. I've missed a tassel there. You see, I always miss something. So now I'll start dark again because that's going to make that highlight stand out. You see how fine this brush goes. If you just tickle, just tickle. It's not a brush. It's a trickle. That's all it is. That's what we want. We want a, a trickle. And then you get the smallest amount of water which is going to dilute that colour to nothing and you get a natural highlight and you've done nothing. So take that up and round and it goes to almost nothing. Again, take that down and round. I've got my little dot coming. My little pinprick hole appearing. Um, and what you can do if you want, be a bit carefully, is just if we pop that under there, again, we've put a darker bit next to a lighter bit, and we've got, we know that that's going to be in front of that. So it does two things. And again, this, this brush goes to the beautiful, beautiful, tiny, tiny, tiny end. So we can get into some really nice tight corners. Oh, Kenny says it won't bother if I turn the book. Oh, thank you. Hope everybody's okay. Thanks for stopping by. If everybody wants to say hi, that's fine. Oh, I missed a bit of... Thing. So you see I've got this little pinprick hole appearing now. I'll take that out and see if you can see it better. So I got the blob of water and I've ignored it. But next bit here, I've got a little bit of an indentation coming. And that's going to be my, it's going to end up like this. Eventually there'll be a, a dip. And that's because I'm just touching again. It's literally e either a pinhead for a bigger space or a pin prick, just the tip for a smaller space. If you want to get that highlight, if you're not bothered, then it's fine. Just touch and go as you feel like it. Just gives you that little bit more of, um, of a colouring thing. If you did this with pencil, you probably want about three or four different pencils and you'd have to kind of go over things and then blend and faff. My hands won't do that. So this is touch and go. I can get a lovely little highlight. I can get a little shadow under there. I can put a shadow under there later if I want. Um, I can do anything I want to do with this little brush. And I think that's the, that that's in hospital you can do it. So I did it on the stroke ward because you can't make a noise. You couldn't possibly put your hands in a pot of pencils. Um, so it works really anyway. If somebody's watching TV, it's fine. You just almost silent almost silent i hope that made sense just have to finish my coffee <laughs> mine's two sugars i need sweetening up i don't normally have sugar but um the porridge i made yesterday um kept me going till tea time and then I have this um it's like a pressure cooker it's a bit like a crock pot but it's a it's a pressure cooker it steams it roasts it does everything um they were 50 pounds and then I think I got mine 
for half price from Wilco's. I thought I'd buy the cheapest one. If it worked, I'd buy an expensive one. Um, and then I put, I, I have another little one that is like a slow cooker, but it isn't. It's another one that does everything in porridge and everything. And yes, I poured water on the porridge, pressed the button that said porridge, and it cooked it in 45 minutes, which is how you cook porridge, slow and, and thingy. But it also, um, I wasn't stirring. I wasn't, normally I stand and stir for about half an hour. Um, so it meant that, I could make porridge because I don't have to stir it and stand next to it. It beeps when it's ready. It keeps it warm. That was brilliant. So last night I did a, a, two very large onions in that and put it on the fry. So it fried the onions very gently with the lid on so they didn't crisp. It just thought it just um, um, it's not sauteed on oh, the words gone. Um, it makes them translucent and it's it made the onions as you start probably with any stock or any sauce or anything so the other pan i cut carrots sweet potato and ordinary potato red potatoes um and i put a couple of sticks of celery in there um i think that's all i put in actually and then when the onions were done, I poured some boiling water in there, a couple of stock cubes, um, about eight cloves of garlic, whole. Didn't I, I, In fact, I did a whole bulb of garlic, so there's probably about 10 little ones. Uh, put that in, um, st made sure that the stock, couple of stock cubes, the vegetarian stock cubes were OK, poured it into the big pot, and then it's a pressure cooker. And I put fast cook. And in eight minutes, we had a stew. We had a vegetable, vegetarian stew, which was absolutely delicious. I did put um, a, t a teaspoon of dried herbs. Everything's got to be dried around here um, because I can't mess about with mixed fresh herbs. And then as it, when it was cooked, um, because my daughter was just coming in from her new job, Amy cycled from Selby, um, from the Abbey, because she's doing that in the Abbey, to make sure that the young ones that need the Abbey class the art class they're there for that um the tuesday group which were all a bit older we decided that we weren't going to do that we were going to stay at home but we promised each other we would paint um unfortunately i wanted to do a, a virtual class uh where people could talk to each other but a lot of the older people didn't have the internet Yes, Kenny, it's, it sounds like an Instapot, but the Instapots are £100 and I'm a bit of a tight Yorkshire lass. So I bought this. It's very similar to an Instapot. Um, I'll get the two cookery books in a second. But I couldn't believe that I haven't cooked for quite a while because I'm poorly. But I managed to cut an onion. But I have a huge knife that you just touch it and it slides through everything. Um, and I managed to do that on a space smaller than this chop, this, this a I think this is a two this this yes it's a two is this uh, drawing board i have the two stock it took eight it took eight minutes in this pressure cooker um which was brilliant because then it meant that i'd actually cooked food for my family when they'd been out for work and it's something that i don't know i couldn't normally do so in the morning i made too much porridge they all had porridge and then I cook this soup. I'll just very quickly get that and then we'll get back to drawing. I'm just going to uh, make another coffee. I'll be back in a second, guys. Not far away. Two steps. Two steps to the pot. Um, it hasn't got a name because it's from Wilco's, but I do have two cookery books. Oopsie. And um, I've got a teapot and I've got a little pot that makes water because I can't lift a kettle um, so um, I mean it's it, it's very haphazard but it works with my coffee I've got throwing it out there. Oh, 
so press the button for my water to boil so the first one i think that was 20 pounds it was reduced the, oh, sorry that one it's gone up now um this is the multi cooker five liter but you can press uh the fry button you've got keep what well, and but the other thing i'll tell you in a second so you've got cancel preset temperature uh, but up here you press buttons and you've got fry rice um cooked chicken all sorts this one uh is again the same um and you um this is the pressure cooker six liter so this was full and there's actually enough for tomorrow but i made a mistake um when it cooks both of them do this when they've cooked they don't turn themselves off they keep warm and my daughter turned up an hour and a half later and she said, I want my, my, my soup. And I said, I thought you'd had your stew. She went, no, I fell asleep. And so as a mistake, it was still piping hot. Um, so that's really good because you can set it. You can do all sorts of things, but you can set it. But I thought eight minutes for a really hearty stew. And then they grated cheese on the top. Uh, they had cheese and they had bread. Um, I've got some vegan cheese that I put on mine and it was absolutely yummy. I took a few photographs of it. It was really yummy, but I was dead, in, dead impressed that I could cook again. Um, and I just sat down. I think it took eight minutes. And the other thing I've got is a little Breville. Now, I bought this for my mum-in-law and then she fell, so she never used it. Um, and it, this is how much it does. It just does one cup. It's quite cheap. There's no, it's a big mug, is that? There's no, um, uh, there's no alteration on it. Now, the other one I bought, which was a bit more expensive, um, it you can have a small cup, you can have a large cup, you can have all sorts. Um, but the other night I came upstairs and I hadn't eaten all day and I didn't want to cook. I didn't feel very well. And I found a pot noodle um, in the cupboard that the girls hadn't had. So I had a pot, a, a, one of those instant pot things, and it filled it perfectly. So in actual fact, it's only one cup, but it works quite well. Um, I've just got up. Any questions, guys? Sorry about the waffle about cooking and things. But again, I thought it would be quite interesting that um as i say this this has come down in price um but this one isn't a pressure cooker and this one is um and i even managed to do it in the bedroom now it is near the window but i did it last night with the window shut because it got really cold all of a sudden um and yet uh and there was it was so easy I, um throw the vegetables in i did fry the onion off normally i do it on the side i've done it before this particular thing but i didn't I haven't made the stew in there. Um, I think I've done it on a, a longer cook or something. Um, so I was really impressed, uh, really impressed with either, either of these. This one, you can um, you can have rice on it. Um, I'll take a photograph because it, even if even if you're not self isolating, if you don't want to cook on your own, for any particular reason, you want a quick meal, uh, especially I know the winter months are going, but it's still nice to do a stew with some crusty bread and a bit of cheese grated on top. It's very quick and it's very healthy. Oh, hi, Sam. Yes. Um, as I say, this one, this one, I mean, I've not used it. It's been in the cooker, this, because I don't use it. It comes with a, a steaming basket because it's a pressure cooker. So you can steam with it. Um, I'll run through very quickly what it would make. Um, it says cooking chicken and meat, cooking rice, cooking porridge. But I didn't do porridge in that one. I did porridge in this one. Uh, cooking fish. But the recipes are pressure cooker brown rice so you can use it as a rice maker uh whole chicken and vegetables so you've got whole chi a whole small chicken chicken broth a bag of frozen mixed veg um that's ready in 30 minutes so that is pretty good for food salmon and vegetables um so you so you put um you put the electric pressure cooker uh, add the bacon, the uh, the bay leaf, the broken cinnamon stick, the cloves and the water. Brush 
the steam rack to prevent from sticking with oil from sticking. Place the steamer rack um, over the water. Brush the salmon with oil on both sides. Place the salmon skin side down. Uh, there's two salmon steaks, presumably, because it says, yeah, two salmon fillets, two whole salmon fillets. Uh, close and lock the lid. And then I think you put, you just press the fish one. That takes 10 minutes. So, and the other thing I like is you can cook something underneath. So if you've got boiling water and you put a bag of frozen mixed veg underneath, you would have mixed veg. And, and if you boil a kettle... That's 10 minutes. If you have a, a cereal bowl and a big plate, uh, a small plate or a large saucer, um, if you put couscous in there, boil the kettle, put the couscous in, then turn this on, the couscous will be 10 minutes. So you'll have couscous or a, a cooking grain. Couscous is the quickest because it's only 10 minutes, no cooking. Um, put the little, stir it. Put, I put a little bit of bullion powder or herbs, stir it. Put the, uh, the, put the saucer on top, leave it for 10 minutes, uh, press this for 10 minutes, and then you'll have couscous, vegetables, and, sa and salmon. Um, I'm sorry about this. It's, it's supposed to be an art problem, but never mind. The porridge is the same. You put your porridge in. You can put butter and milk in it. I make mine with water. And then I add fruit. Um, I showed yesterday there's a roast pork. You can roast in it. Um, steamed salmon fillets. Again, what's that one? That's the roast. There's nothing much you can't really do in this particular pot. The reason I got two was... I wanted to make a curry or something in this one and the rice in this one. Uh, or you could do the potatoes in this one and roast in this one. So, again, there's two different ways of doing things. And having two of these on, I have them on. Uh, I had them on yesterday. Uh, this one does everything except it's not a pressure cooker. So the lid is just a normal. It has a seal on it, but it's a normal. It's It's slightly better than a pan, but it's not a pressure cooker. So you're cooking rice, you can steam, uh, you cook pulses, porridge, roasting, uh, meat function, add a small amount of oil to help seal and brown the meat. And then you just press the meat button, uh, cooking risotto, making oh, it makes a risotto beautifully. I have made a risotto in it. No stirring, no standing there like an idiot for 25 minutes. Shallow frying, which is what I did. I fried the onion off, making soups, making stews, saute. Now, sauteing, that's what you saute the mush, the onions. Um, steaming, you can do very similar things. So the frying time, these are the programs. and This is how long it takes. So you've got fry, which is 35 minutes, stew is 70 minutes, meat is 50 minutes, bean, bean tendon is, I don't know what a tendon is, but anyway, 45 minutes, saute or slow cook is 70, roast is 40, steam is 30, soup is 60, risotto is 50 minutes, porridge is 45 minutes, rice is 45 minutes, pasta is 35 minutes, and you've got number nine, which is reheat. And the beauty of this one is there's also a button where you can, change the temperature as well it's very much like an instapot but this one doesn't steam but this was 20 pounds i think and this one was 25 so i couldn't resist them when they were on offer and i thought if i liked them i thought they'd be really cheap and cheerful but actually i was really surprised um and then my husband said that if if i used them he would buy me um the expensive ones <laughs> it's just just bought <laughs> just bought one so I'll show you a quick picture and then you can see it. It's quite big. It's, it's, it's a big one. It's uh, it's as big as a, a, a very big bread bin on a, on a seed pot. Whoopsie. My legs are a bit iffy this morning. Keep an eye on my phone because Hubby and I are texting each other. Um, so really quickly. See if I can find. I'm not very impressed with Sainsbury's. I got an email to say that people that can't get out to shop. Um, so I filled their basket with £150 worth of stuff. And there's no way you can ring them up and try and get them to deliver it for you, even though they say that they would deliver it for people that can't get out. So not impressed with Sainsbury's at the minute. <laughs> there's no point sending me the email to say you're going to do it and then not do it. Um,
so that's the that's the cheaper one which has got keep warm reheat you've got the menu but here this is where you've got rice and when you press the menu this little light pops round the little light will pop round onto anything you want so you keep pressing it till you want so you've got keep warm uh you can preset it to come on at a later time um i just press the fry one and put the onions in and it's it just did it in the normal time and then i just put it in the other one um i don't know if i've got a picture of the other one where's my kettle oh and that's what it made it made a hu huge pot all it and it didn't measure anything i just poured it in poured the water um and then we had the porridge and i put cherries on mine and honey so you can put anything on top. So if you make it plain, you can do anything you like with it. The same as rice. Um, I haven't got a picture of the big pot. Um, but they there are lots of different ones out there. And I, I was kind of worried going, I don't want to pay a lot of money if it doesn't work properly, if I don't like it. So I was very impressed. Um, I'm not sure if Wilco still have them, but I was dead impressed. Um, I was dead impressed with both of them, actually. Um, and I have two active fries because my grill broke. The oven still works. I've got a double oven. They both work as an oven, but not the grill. So that's why I've decided to get those. Um, oh, Dallas says, we bought an extra pot. So can you have one in the dishwasher and the bowl part that comes out? Yes, the 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 non-stick so they're brilliant um you do get a few pots and things with them you get a steaming basket with this one let me find this one really quickly you get a paddle a, a make a, a measuring bowl and the steamer for the little one that is not a pressure cooker and then the one that's a pressure cooker there's a steaming rack there's a little rack that drops in so you can steam uh, you get the measuring pot, the spoon, and you get the little jug, which is the water catcher because it's a pressure cooker. But actually, I didn't get anything. I sat mine on that ugly little black tray, which is clean. It's been the dishwasher black and it just looks horrible, but um, it is sterilised. And just, just to make sure you don't have any dribbles. Um, but it worked, the system kind of works quite well. So I was really impressed that in the bedroom I could make everybody a big stew. Yeah, Dallas says it makes cooking easy. And the other thing is, I, I as I say, I, I think, oh no, I can't be bothered. Whereas I did it, it's it was on and, and they'd actually arrived home. I'd meant to do it an hour later, but I was streaming. Um, and I meant to do it an hour later, but actually, as it happened, it worked out really well. So there are things we can do and we can use. And and again, not going out buying a very expensive one just be one to tie you over and if you love it and think oh my god i can't live without this go out and buy an expensive one or wait for christmas or something but a cheap one will do you know a cheaper one a cheaper make will do and i say i was really i didn't think the wilco's one was up to much but very impressed but i did do a lot of research uh there was one or two people said they didn't like it but a lot of people said it was brilliant and even though it was quarter of the price of the others i thought for that price it's worth it so <laughs> back to coloring sorry guys So thanks for joining me guys i hope everybody's keeping their pecker up yes keep calm and color <laughs> we should have smelly vision shouldn't we so that if i'm cooking a uh, if i'm cooking a stew in the in the you can smell it <laughs> um so where are we now i've done the little bow i i thought that must be a handbag at first i thought it was a pond <laughs> a bit thick um we may have to do the same colors i think i'd love to be able to do these like primroses little primroses with dark pink outsides and but i don't think i come with this brush um i don't think 
Um, you see, I have these Sable series. Uh, oh, these are series 16, but they're still a bit too precious for colour books, really. I don't really want to use my Sable brushes on there. Let me have a look at this one. You see, when you look at it, there isn't much in it, not when you can draw that back. So, oops. It is quite a nice brush, I have to say. And it's about the same. This is a size one, I think. Yeah, it's a size one. So it's about a size one, is this. It, it, it really does the job quite well. I was just looking if I had a rigger. But there again, that would make everybody else want to go out and buy a rigger. And I'm not want to be enabling. I want us to use what we've got, really. Um, this number two brush, quite cheap and cheerful, a couple of pounds. That probably would do the same. But you've got to keep dibbing in and drawing back, dibbing in and drawing back in your water and washing your brush out. So it, it this is a lot easier. Um, and again, it's the touch and go system. No water to spill. Uh, I mean, kids can do this. Kids can just do this. Uh, so purse. I think we're going to have to stick with these colours, I think. I would like to keep so sorry about that guys it's a bit of a, a waffle I don't think these I don't think my new shows for the current climate are going to be just coloring so apologies guys on YouTube watching um skip this bit or rewind or because I think we need a bit of I've just used that one and I've just used that one. I think we need a bit of umph for the next few months. So um, my usual bitty shows uh, <laughs> will be even more bitty. I'm hoping to do a couple of YouTube videos, which a couple of videos, which are kind of precise and, and there's not much waffle because it's, it gets a bit waffly in my shows. I do apologise. But I was thinking about the show last night, thinking, do you mention, do you mention what's going on in the world? And we need an escape, but we also need positive, um, positive things to do. Um, and if you know, if you learn to cook in a stock pot. You've learned a new skill. And then you might put it away until winter and think, hang on, I, I did my stock pot. And it was that easy when things were a bit difficult. I might get it out again or use it or give it a uh, send. I got one for my daughter, not quite the same, but the same principle, um, a slow cooker when she was a student. Because I said, you know, put your, put your stew on. Um, and her boyfriend was a, veg it was a meat eater. So... Uh, he would come home and make his meat, uh, 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 but she'd already done that. The slow cooker was already on to walk into. So, even the students, it's quite nice to have a meal to walk into. You know, they're, they're still human beings. In fact, they're more kind of stressed than everybody else because they're learning and it's their whole life before them they have to they have to learn and if they're coming home and trying to cook and faff about it's a lot easier now I will get a buckle with this because it's a big space this is a big space so I decided that maybe we we might want a bit of deviation from from coloring so I was going to ask if if you thought that maybe we can either play this two ways. One is we don't mention anything at all and we just colour and we completely escape. Or the other one is we swap tips and hints and tips and encouragement and, and new ideas within the group as a whole because lots of different people will have lots of different ideas um, and these ideas will will spring and possibly help each other. So I don't know what you feel about that, guys, because after all, you know, this isn't my show. This is your this is your 
this is your time now it's a bit bitty that but it might look a bit velvety but i don't want to do any more wet so it's it's a little bit is that oh hi shannon welcome to bunny designs anybody else popping in <laughs> uh waffle waffle yorkshire waffle <laughs> it doesn't come with syrup unfortunately so i don't know what you think guys so um if you've got any ideas pop them in caps um but it's it's nice i think that people can can kind of waddle about now back to where i was going to leave this live show i don't know what anybody else thinks is there any other social thing that would do that uh, i was going to leave the the live link open uh, but the uh, the company that um they haven't got back to me so i'm taking it it's a no-no because they haven't got back to me about boosting the signal so it doesn't drop is smaller spaces are a lot easier oh the birds are having a twerp tweet 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 <laughs> i've actually the table was supposed to before i put the stock pot on it um it's an over bed table and it was supposed to be so that i could sit and watch the birds and color um, which I think I can still do at just at some point. So. so I think I'll do the sweeties. Yeah, I think I might do the sweets a purple, but oh, then I want a purple. Well, look what this purple does. So thanks for joining me, guys. I hope we're having a pleasant afternoon colouring. That's what we need to do. We need to chill out and colour. And I think this is a, a really good way to chill out. So the, the thought of getting all the pencils out and getting all the, the, the pastels out and all the rattly tins out is like, I, yeah, I just, I want to do this for a long time. I don't want to be doing it. I don't want any mess. You know, I left this out last night, opened the paints and just opened the book and got on with it. And again, I think we need that. We need that ease. We don't want to be having to set up everything and then have to set down because the dinner table's there or this we can just bob in a bag um, at the bottom of the behind the sofa and it, it's out the way. I used to have this system in my handbag. And I have a big handbag that's that's got um I can get a colour book in. So I think that's that and that's it for purple. Let me just put an extra bit. I don't think we've got any more. I missed the tassel on this. I'm going to have to touch this blue one again. Do a tassel. Has anybody got any questions? Oh, hi, CBs. Welcome to Bunny Designs. Anybody else popping in? Uh, so I got the sweeties. I need a, I think because it's, because yellows, um, a complementary color, I think. I'm going to put a yellow band next to the purple. That's 
a bit dull with that one. So now I've got to pick the green. I do like my sap green, I have to say. Um, I'm not going to mix today. I've got that little pinprick hole. I don't know if you can see that little pinprick hole appearing. There's that little hole appearing. And so that means I can just put the brush in there and come out. So I think what I might do is is do the bottom of the leaf. And that is quite pale, is that? I think it might go a bit stronger. That's an underneath curl. So, and again, can't help myself just touching into that viridian and again it's still touch and go but just giving a little bit of variation To mix it up a bit you could do that with um, a different blue probably that would have been a better that probably would have been better than this is putting blue over it but I've done it now so keep some continuity in there somewhere again it will just colouring and if you use little tiny circular motions you're not going to initiate and, and ask for that whoosh of, of water because if you do start pushing down and spinning round you're going to end up with what all watercolour brushes do release water and we don't really want to do that so I've just got a little bit of variation because that leaf would be a bit boring if it was if it was all the same so you touch one and I can do that because I'm not messing up the colours. I couldn't do that with a dark colour and a light colour, but because they're very similar, they're both quite forgiving. So I can and if you do it quick enough without rubbing too much, you can get away with it. So again, a little bit of a shadow under here. And then manipulate that down there. Again, you've got to be comfortable with that wrist to get to get where you want to be and as quick as possible it's not so much the water it's the rubbing that does the damage um, it's the rubbing that does the damage so again the underneath of that one and then the pinhead of colour They are very, very well pigmented, these colours, so they kind of just mingle in. And we kind of try just to activate that tip. If I started doing this, I'd get tons of water. But just by activating that tip, just getting enough.
again, you can practice how you want to do this. Like a variegated leaf. Um, and being a watercolour, it will move. So there's all sorts of ways even within this that you can kind of mess about with how the how the colour's going. Now these are smaller leaves, so I'll do two probably. Again, play about with what we've got. The consistency is about a marker. That's that's a nice flow is about the consistency of a marker, and that's what this brush does. And then you can always go back in and just give that a bit of a I would probably let it go let it dry before we do too much. Um, any more leaves? I think I've got all the leaves. Now there is a moon there. So these particular spaces aren't that big. So I could do a background, but it would crinkle a little bit. But we could try a background. Um, it's something that I don't normally do. I think I might do little, little yellow flowers, I think. So again, I have been touching a dark green. Clean the brush. And... Don't know which yellow to use. I think I'll use this one. No, maybe use that one. Oh, I've forgotten. I've got a little. So I think possibly these might be full. These might be full on daisies rather than um, unless I just put. If I just put a dot in the middle, it will become a daisy rather than the flower. Um, because if I do a dark background, it they will show up lovely. So I might just do that actually. It's, it's very rare I do backgrounds because normally the pages will buckle. There is a bit of a buckle on this page now because of that. Has anybody got any questions? Thanks for stopping by, guys. Hope everybody's holding holding up. We have to keep calm and colour. I know we can't see that now, but we might see it later. I think I might do the little um, I might do those little dots this yellow as well because then that will join it up together I think I say this brush is a delight because it, it it it'll do a bigger space but it'll also do these little tiny areas so it's it's a very versatile little brush um and it's perfect for colouring because I had a bit of a uh, but on the back there's, there's nothing. Now there will be. So this is as it is now. You see there's a little bit of crinkle because I re-wet re them. But I kind of like that mixing. So 
So I was going to just just to get that stark white off um, I'm not going to do every dot as I say this is I want to be as, as near as I can but I'm not going to make myself go cross-eyed doing all these little dots T to my mind that's just that's quite enough you can see there's another little dip appearing on that one now. I kind of like that. Now she's got some wings. I'm not quite sure what to do with those, but I think if I do the next bit, I've got some yellow. Um, I think I'm going to do her hair yellow ochre When I go back now, it's so light. It's giving me a highlight. And I can't do too much because I've got that nice highlight there. I'm going to keep that one. So I've got a bit of a highlight on her hair. And I remembered that I found oh I found another little bit of blue didn't I so it's this blue and where was it there it was just wanted the palest of blues I kind of like that I think if I put a background I might might not like it um, no I think I like that without a background but I, I will have to do her wings so I think I'm gonna I want a very pale color so I think I want a, a raw sienna
and we'll take that highlight back down again. So she's got some tips on that. Oh, I've got my coffee. So if you've got any questions, guys, thanks for stopping by. Is anybody else colouring in? What books are you colouring in? Sorry, I can't talk to you guys. <laughs> guys. Goodness me. I don't know what day it is. I think it's Thursday. I think it's Thursday today. So I kind of like that. I, I, I think I'm not tempted to do a background, I have to say. Um... I think these particular sh shapes, I like the white background. Oh, this is like an ivory just, just off white. So I think, um, I forgot to do the little bug, though. We'll have to do the little bug, won't we? And again, we're just keeping... Um, more neutral colours for the little bug, really. And I now need a complexion, so I think I could do with um, should I use this? Can't use this one. It's not quite as warm as I'd like. Just to take the stark white off, I think will be fine. And I need the uh, Elysian Crimson. Of the sleeve off now that's gone um that's dried so i could if i wanted to go back in and put some indication of a, of a shadow I think I'm going to call that done. I like the little white daisies. I like the fact that it's simple. Um, I changed my mind about the background because um, I don't really mind you. They are asleep, I suppose, and there is a moon. Um, probably find the page will buckle, but they are smaller spaces, so possibly if I could get away with it, I possibly could. I'm going to have to go over that bit again. And possibly, possibly do the yellow to kind of counteract the yellow edges, perhaps. It's dried a little bit now, so it's, it's going to forgive me a little bit. Oh, 
Oh my goodness, I don't know what's happening outside. <laughs> oh, Sam says, can, can you hear the chirping? I don't know what's banging about, but yeah, the birds are having a good chirp. Uh, luckily, I'm south facing, so. <laughs> oh, thank you, Sam. Sam, thank you. So, um, I don't know, I can't make my mind up. If I did the background, I think I would do, I think I'd probably do, I might even do the Payne's Grey, but I like the, I like this bit rather than this bit. It's an opportunity to use the bigger brush. I'm not going to have any light, are we? Could be an opportunity to use that bigger brush, actually. But again, I think it would work the page too much. I'm still just activating this tip of the brush. Want a smooth surface, slow and gentle, and just keep going. I think it needs to be quite dramatic. So, if you don't get this the first time, leave it for a day or so and then come back. The bed is having a good old Twitter. <laughs> I have a hedge where there's literally hundreds of birds going on a night. Um, and just when you think no more can go in, they just pile in. I'll have to video it one night. It's... It's quite a phenomenon. And we had it the other hedge at the other side, but the lady took it out while I was away. And I was a bit cross because the, it was full of birds, absolutely stuffed with birds. Um, and you've never seen anything like it. It's like every little tiny perch has got a bird on it. And we don't put the bird, my daughter puts the bird feeders out, but we're not a big bird feeder person. But um, because the cat kills the most beautiful little birds. Uh, we have one cat that's outside who's the prettiest little cat, but she's a demon. Um, but everybody else feeds the birds and then they come here to sleep. See, it's drying out a little bit, so you just activate the tip. Obviously, if you do a lot of this, you're going to wreck that beautiful tip on the end. I have about six or seven of these particular brushes. I can't help myself. Every time I, I go to cast art and I just buy a set, I can't help myself. Um, but you, the tip will go eventually if you're doing backgrounds and scrubbing. So... It's just, I don't know if I'm going to like this, probably not, but hey-ho. Just to show you can, if you're careful and you don't wet too much, you can do a background. <laughs> they do, don't they? Yeah, they do.
So if you left this for a good 24 hours, you could go over it again and do the same and you would get a bit of a flatter matte black gown, but I'm not. Or you could use a gouache. Um, again, it's another thing, another brush. I don't really want to do that. This is just mind, not mind numbing, but mind mending. I can, it's mind mending, I think it's a better word. It's just gently pootling along. But it probably will need another coat, but you can't do that today. It has to be one or two days away after it's completely dried out. Because if you do it today, even though you think it's dry, it'll trash the page. And you'll get bits coming up and all sorts of things. So, but there's no reason why after two days you can't go back and do this again. You've just got to remember slow strokes, small strokes. Look at this black is a kind of a warm soil black. It's not a cool black, it's a, it's a warmish black. Whereas the paint's grey is very stark. And I didn't want to put a stark colour next to these quite nice colours. But as I said, normally I just do not like backgrounds. I, I just like the fact it's coloured in and I leave it. But I just thought we'd have a play. Always push yourself out of your comfort zone. This is the ideal opportunity to do that. Do things you don't normally do. Um, if Hubby would have come in isolation with me, I'd have asked him to uh, learn how to play chess because I like to play chess. Um, or we'd play Scrabble. And... But it, Hubby can't do it. He... He he says he's not at risk, even though I think he is. He says he can't do that because he says the girls need him to do the shopping and things. So um, I think he's wrong, but it's his choice. I can't make him. Um, we've had big arguments and I thought this would bring us closer together. But actually, it, it, it's not brilliant because he is the kind of person that will not he wants to carry on as normal so i mean actually this is probably quite normal for me the only difference is um that he's not kind of we're not going out together we're not doing things but i spent two years on the sofas before doing absolutely nothing um, and I think a lot of arty people think, oh, my goodness, I can stay at home and get tons of my art stuff done. So we have to think about it as a positive thing. But my hubby wouldn't be able to stay in. Um, he's still talking about going to see his mum, who's 95, I think, in August. So um, you have to let these people do what they want. I don't know if anybody else is finding there's more, more arguments than I thought there would be. But but we we argue all the time. We've always done. We've always bickered. So there's no change. I thought there would be a change, actually, but there isn't. So I don't know if anybody else is finding that if you were the partner that's so different to you, and they say opposites attract. When it comes to issues like this, it makes a big difference. I don't think I like this, but I might do when it's finished.
anybody's got any questions for me, pop them in caps because I, I'm trying not to. I don't normally take notice of chat unless it's for me. But thanks for joining, guys. Oops. I think this is going to be very boring, this. Um, you imagine when you're doing it black, it's going to be jet black, but. You get so carried away, you forget. You forget about what you're doing, and again, that's probably the calming, the calming bit, I suppose. Got a little well in the black now coming. You see, you should never say never. There's a little tiny pinprick hole appearing there. So if I always touch that bit, then. Although I've got to be a bit careful because if you want the tiny pinprick and you're touching a little wet hole, you're going to get a bigger amount. So it's all right for here. But when I'm doing something that I want the tiniest amount, it might not work. Because you've got more surface area that's wet. Whereas when I'm touching with a pinprick, um, I, I would have far too much colour on the... And there. And when you squeeze the brush, you get the colour a minute or two later. And again, it's just practice. The one thing about doing this the background is you are definitely practicing your brush skills and keeping within the line so even though you think oh my goodness this is boring it's, take ages. it's boring to watch but it's very good practice for brush skills The other thing you could do, which wouldn't be too difficult with this one, is to, is to cut it out and put it on a black background. That's the other way to do it if you really wanted it on a very black matte 
background. Oh, Shannon says, I, I really like that. Oh, yes, the white spaces. Yes. Um, as I say, I, especially these that are off-white, uh, they just lend themselves to the delicate sketches that they are. But um, I thought I'd do when it's very rare I do backgrounds. But um, I saw the moon and she's asleep, so I kind of put two and two together. But it's not... It's not a waste of paint, but it's probably a waste of, of energy because I've done the interesting watercolour effect bit um, and it didn't need a background. That's why people don't draw a lot of things in backgrounds. Um, but again, it's just I just thought I'd do it. But I, I again, I just love the... Um, the ivory backgrounds on quite a lot of colour books. It's it's very rare I do one. Um, if it's if I'm doing anything in passing uh, realism, that's why it took about ten hours to do the double page because it it lent itself to it. It it all depends on the page. Um, most of the Harry Potters, because it's a photograph, there is a background. It's not a made up image whereas when it's a, a made up image the the um i've done a couple i think i've done a couple um of kirby's backgrounds but again i just like the fact that they're not there isn't a background there so i've got a shadow now i just want to make sure i keep that little star So, um, but each to their own. Some people might do backgrounds every time. Um, it will definitely crinkle if you do a watercolour. I'll show you the crinkle. Um, and of course, once you put it on, you can't take it off. It's the only advantage of working in digital art is if you do drop a big clanger, you can just, uh, or a major clanger, as my daughter says. <laughs> We've been watching the clangers. I was having a granddaughter about. And um, the clangers is probably the only one. <laughs> she kind of likes Bing, but I want to slap him. <laughs> He's such a horrible little rat pack. And the panda that takes his underpants, takes his trousers off and runs around in his underpants. Having said that, I knew a little boy that did that. Uh, the minute he was he was off school, they had a swimming pool and he'd run through three rooms. And by the time he hit the pool room, he was completely naked and used to just jump in the pool. Didn't matter that my girls were there. Or anybody. It was quite funny. He'd be probably mortified that we remember that. But, so, yeah, I, I get I get it. But it's 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 not it's not the norm. And children need to be entertained without imagining that they're kind of morons and, and I think children's television the baby one especially was a, a bit of a shock for me so she's allowed to watch the clangers so I don't know if anybody else's children's programs are a bit bad uh oh she's on a rant again Oh, Kenny says she loves the pale yellow or the beige. Yeah, as again, I think, I, I just think it lends its, oopsie, I've done a boo-boo there because I haven't got my hand like that. You see, I've been trying to do it like that and you just can't do it. This probably will, will need another coat. I don't normally colour when I'm watching telly. As I say, the only time I colour is when I've got the camera on. Um or if I'm going anywhere, sometimes if I went on the train, I've been taking my sketchbook with me because if you want to colour and not go over the edge, you can't really be out. Although I have done this in the car um, because, you know, it is important that you keep in the lines for certain colour books. 
um, but I've coloured all the way up to 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 Scotland to the ferry, but oh Hollyhead. Um, but there's nothing worse than if if you've been really really careful and then you see. I want to get that hair. What you should do is turn that round so that when I do this, I've got a natural curve of the wrist. And then you don't go over the line because you can't help yourself. You just will not go over the line. Um, And again, the moon, you see, you might as well do all the curves that way. You've got such control over this brush. But on the back stroke, you don't. You only have control of it in that position. And that's why it's so good to move about I mean the picture might be more dramatic because I've done a background but as a color page I don't know it's not it's not growing on me really I have to say it's not really growing on me um, and that's why if there isn't a lot of background I would put in the especially in the um, Joanna Basford, I would do that. So there's a couple of videos that I've got out there are how to how to fill in the backgrounds, how to how to make backgrounds easier. I think for something to do. I think I will do a second background on this, I think, tonight. Because Hubby's been sleeping um, at the bottom of the bed. We've been doing uh, top to tail. Uh, because, as I say, he woke up the other morning and he coughed um, in my face, which, he, as I say, he didn't mean to do. He just woke up and... So we decided that he would sleep um, top to tail. But I don't really think that's self-isolating. It's not going to do any good because he's still about. So he's been banished. <laughs> I think I'll ask Jessie if she'll come in with me because Jessie keeps me awake during the night. But I think I'll ask Jessie to come. and be my partner for a while. Perhaps I should, everybody should volunteer to be a foster, a, foster, a foster house for a cat or a kitten, and then nobody would be lonely. Because we've got the Romanian dogs, we can't foster cats and kittens anymore. Um, unless it's desperate and they're in the bedroom. Because um, it's too dangerous. Because Romanian dogs run wild and you can't get that out of them i'm gonna have to fiddle about a bit <laughs> oh shannon says i'm definitely i rescue i'm definitely not lonely
you see now all those beautiful watercolors have kind of disappeared and um, there's more mood to it and we know it's night time but it's not I just it's just lost it now as i say i will do a background but normally do things while i'm watching tv but um i will be on my own i think today well i've been on my own most of the time but um Hubby's mixing with the girls who are going to work and one works in a pub um, so that she's, well, they both work in the pub, actually, but one's just got another job. But she's working with disabled people, but she's out and about and going, going shopping. And she was going shopping and going to clubs. So... I've just got to be a bit selfish and it is it is selfish but um You've definitely got to concentrate when you're doing this. You see, I've now got a big hole in the bottom of here, so maybe that's why I don't do backgrounds. I'm a tight Yorkshire lass. The way to get round doing as much background, even on this page, would be to 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 get a piece. And I buy children's I buy children's tracing paper because adults' tracing paper is four times as much. And actually, I bought some as an experiment, and the children's is better quality. So um, you don't always get better. It's okay, this. It will look better when the blacks are black because the daisies are kind of, and the snowy little bits, whatever they are, they're not going to stand out. So, um... And again, having to keep going back for colour. Oopsie. Oops, sorry guys, having to go back to colour is not as best for your hands because obviously I've used my hands now twice as much as I would have done by just touch and go. So uh, probably that's why another reason why I've just I've just found a way to make it easier. And um, a lot of watercolours don't have a background. They f fiddle out to nothing from the main the main event kind of thing so i think that's probably another reason why you know if you do a lovely little watercolor you don't want to be you don't want to it's lost now all that lovely color i had i think's lost i don't know what anybody else feels i mean i know it's not a perfect background but even so i think it's not i knew it wouldn't be i've done i've done a couple of backgrounds before i knew i wouldn't like it as much because and I've also trashed the end of my brush as well. So that's, there you go. <laughs> Tight Yorkshire lass. Um, it's not buckled because it's small spaces. It's definitely relaxing. Yeah, it is relaxing. <laughs> it is relaxing. Um, going round everything uh, maybe the watercolor paint wasn't the best but as I say we'll just do this other I shouldn't really do it at this stage but just to show you that
Or maybe I just don't have the patience. I don't know. I did. Um, I, I, um, I think I used an acrylic on the spider's web in a, the Colin Thompson with all the little creatures and the little hidden things in the spider's web. Um, I, I used masking fluid and then because there were so many, um, there were so, so many little creatures. So I think I used masking fluid for that one. So second coat makes a bit of a difference. Really, I should have waited until tomorrow, but maybe because the window's open, things are drying out quite nicely. Oh, thank you, Kenny. Kenny says, once you do another coat, it'll pop, which it is doing, isn't it? So, yeah, it will do. But look at the hole in the <laughs> Look at the hole in the vein. That is a big hole now, it's a big hole. That is a big hole, that. So perhaps, but I don't use the black really like this anyway, so it's probably a way to use black up, so. But it says, it's a nicer black than the gray, than the Payne's gray. It's a warmer black, so I, I'm quite happy with the black black. It's, it, as I say, there is a big difference between this black and Payne's Grey. Payne's Grey is a bit too cold for me. Um, lamp black is the blackest black. And then there's ivory black. Oops. There's such black. There's so many blacks. But... I think the daisies will pop out as well. So, yeah, I think... I think it will pop out when it's done. But I can't possibly do any more now because it's so boring. <laughs> you lose brain cells. It's like watching children's babies' television. You lose brain cells after a while. So she might look quite pretty when she's done. Um, so there's a the little bit of crinkle, but the, oops, there's a little bit of crinkle. But nothing to nothing to go home about. Um, yes, Kenny, I could move this thing to the spot, but I've got like a bit of an inkwell going on in there. <laughs> it's a bit wet, so I was using it like an inkwell, um, which because I wanted more colour. Whereas the other way, I didn't want a lot of colour, so I've used the top. If that that makes sense. Oh, thank you, Darla. Thank you. I wasn't sure about the the yellow, but I've I got rid of the. Again, that could do with another coat, but I would do that another day. So yes, it, um, it's quite enjoyable, but again, my idea is I'd much rather have spent that time doing that page because <laughs> I'm like that. Um, but yeah, I I kind of I will do that. Um, I know what I'm doing with that, so I don't have to put what I'm doing with that. So that's okay. Um, and again, the brush is 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 cleaned, and that's it. Considering the fact that we've been playing with black, normally you'd have to put it in your washing brush and do that and waste a lot of black paint. It's all gone now. It was on my hands. It was on there. There's no black. I'm on a slant now. Um, I'm just wondering where my oops oh. on my travels. No, it's not handy. I have to look for it today and use it. Just bear with me a second, see if my 
my granddaughter have done anything. I just text. Better send him a message on top because <laughs> it'd be good that. Oh, sorry, darling. It's uh, fairy celebrations. Um, fairies. Oh, that's the one I've just. Is that the one I've just done? Oh no, the one. Oh, that's the next one. Look there. I wish I'd not seen that now because it's in pink. Um. Oh, sorry. I might want to do that. I'm just thinking about my pastels. Um. There are so many other things. Oops, I've got I've got a trolley that I need to sort out. Just have it put in here. So this is my Ganzai Tambi watercolours. I haven't used them for years because I have them. You can see look. I haven't used them for years. I've used them once, so I might have used them twice, but the second time I used them, I put them in my little book of watercolours, um, and I've not used them since. So um, I kind of like, so they're there. In fact, the rubber band is so old, it's nearly going to snap. That's how old I have not been in there. Maybe four or five years, maybe? Quite a long time. Golly gun drops, maybe even six. Oh, my goodness. Um, I've got my Derwent pastels, which you can use in the same way. Um, and what I've done, um, there's a little dip where it says England, and that's where I rub. If you see that one, it's gone. That's where I rub. You can use the same method. Pastels are, if they're good quality, they are very highly pigmented. They are water-based. Obviously, oil-based pastels aren't. Um, and that says Karen Dash. But these, oops. Now I've got another box to put these in. These are my uh, my wet Derwent art bars, and these colours are awesome. But again, you can use them by touching, just touching and making a well, and then colouring with them. I might bring these back. The reason I haven't brought these back is I love them. Absolutely love them. There's sweet corn. There's wheat. A mango. I just wish I would bring these colours back. Absolute turquoise. Um, turquoise. Um, um, topaz. Ochre. Um, oh, the colours. There's one called. Um, there's there's cocoa. Popcorn. Um, is that cinnamon? No, that's praline. There's, there is a cinnamon. There's processed magenta. Oh, all these colours are like, whoa, you could eat them. Um, gooseberry. Uh, this is uh, pale lemon. But they don't make these anymore. So if I start making videos, which I did, everybody was wanting to buy them. Oh, you haven't got this book. <laughs> So um, I wish Derwent would bring these colours back. Ultra blue, um, Pacific blue, marigold, um, dark indigo. Ah, absolutely scrummy. And these colours um, are very, very well pigmented as well. So I'm actually going to have to pop and leave that out because I need, I need to know what to do with those. Um, but I always put an, an elastic band over them. Oops, sorry, guys, that was a bit crunchy. Because if you don't, they'll end up on the floor um, and they'll end up spilt. So I'm just going to have to warm my coffee up. Uh, the babies are having a... That's a big tw Twitter. It's very overcast today. It's very overcast, but it is nice to be here so I can sit and listen to the birds, I have to say. Gosh, my coffee's gone cold. Has anybody else got any questions? I'm just going to see what other books, but I think I might be tempted to, to work in that one today. Um, there was Fairy Miracles 
that we did yesterday um, and I've put all my books away so I've got some brighter colours again I just like to colour them and then leave them as uh, it's just very rare um, that I I don't know what I've done that with I'll have to look that one up but it's just really rare that I do that um, so what I suggested yesterday or the other day was that I would uh, if anybody wanted to work in a particular book if they asked me um, there's a, quite a few books I've got um, I know Colin Thompson one's quite good I think it's still about eight to ten pounds that one I think um, let me just see what other books we've got Um, oh, that's my, that's what I'm looking at at the minute. It's very messy. Um, so I have um, some Joanna Basford's. I've got most, uh, but not, I don't think the recent, um, Kirby Roseanne. Um, I've got some Millie Mariotta, and I've got another one up there that, she, that somebody bought me as well for Christmas. Uh, Pride and Prejudice, again, that's a, they're big spaces, so not really good for watercolours. Uh, uh, Daydreams, Hannah Carlson. Um, so I've got Fairy Celebrations, Tenderful Enchantments, um, and then these two, and then the Hannah Carlson is Daydreams, Summer Nights, um, I think that's Autumn Some Things, and Magical Dawn. And then I've got some fairy books, uh, the Harry Potter books, Colin Thompson, um, the Botanical Gardens. Um, and then at the top, I've got Harry Clark. And these are the ones from Morrison's and Tesco's and uh, W.H. Smith's. Um, they're like gothic -y girls kind of things. Um, and some more obscure ones up there. Um, the little is that the mother's one that that escaped to Oz. Those are the little square ones. They're quite nice. Oh, thank you, Shannon. Thank you. Um, thank you. So, where else have we got here? Um, so, there's there's quite a lot to go on. Um, there's the ink in the ivy and the inky butterfly, which I wanted to do in these. Um, and I keep having blobs with these uh, graphic, Derwent graphics, but they brought out some liner pens and some others. So I might actually go back to having a play with these. I got them out to have a play with. Um, the graphic line painters, but I think you get so many blobs with these. I wanted to write with them. So the other way to use them is I use them with a little, a little pot. And when I had a blob, I did some monochrome um, and I had quite a few blobs. So if you see these these graphite tint um, videos of mine, you'll see that I used the little dish. I had quite a lot of blobs. And when I did that, I used it as a monochrome. I can't remember which book it was. I just got to see if I can find it. But it, it completely by accident, I ended up doing single colours, um, which actually I might do. I might do with this one, but not in these books. So bear with me a second. I'm just going to see if I can find them. Thinking about it, I think it's daydreams. Um, but I'll just go and have a look. And what that meant was I'd, I'd got all this uh, inky paint out. And it would, once they're dried, they're dead. So I needed to use them. And I used them colour in a single colour. And these are some of the most dramatic pages that I've done. I think it's daydreams, but I've just double checked.
messed up if you like before. <laughs> right. I will do a, a so those are the um, fairy miracles in that one. So the other one by Carla is this one. This one, um, let's see. Um, again, I like to do the pale and leave the background. And if you do the first page, it's a practice. So you get a bit of an idea of how pale you can get. And I did like these uh, colours. Um, did a background on this one. Unusual for me. I think there's a video. There is a video for most of these. This is pastel, I think. This is pastel. And the pastel one works like the ink tense. You, because pastel has very little binder but a lot of pigment, the colours are spectacular. So there's quite a few videos that I do with that. Um, I've forgotten how I did this one. I think that was ink tense blocks. Um, there's definitely one with a cat. So I've made a start on that one. Um, might be a day to kind of work in these books. So this is Magical Dawn. And I was kind of working my way through things. Um, this looks very like um, Neocolor 2s. There are videos on these. Um, again, I was using all the different products that I have so that everybody could have a go. They're all different, even though the colours are very similar. I think that one is um, Peerless. I love the pierce. Now this one I've scratched. It's all scratched, but I've not, I've, I've done, well, that half I have, I've activated it. So this one's got the scratch. This is what I meant when you, this one's the same. I've scratched, and I think this one is pastel. I've scratched and left it. So then you go along with the rigor brush or a water brush and activate it. I did the same with this one. I think I was trying to do the whole book of this. This one's drawn. You can tell when I've, you see, this one's drawn and then that one's been activated. Um, this one's the same. This is, this is near color twos, I think. Near color twos. I've, I've activated that bit and the rest of it isn't. And um, I'm pretty sure that's near color twos. Um, and it's to show that you could do this for somebody and then give it to them and then they can do the artistic bit. This is another one. Looking at it, um, I think that's near color twos as well. So again, it's all scratched. All the colors, all the colors are scratched. I'm just trying to see if the camera can pick that up. All the colors are scratched in, but there's no activation. There's no water. So what I would do is take that. Oh, sorry, take that one and push it up there. Take that and push it up there, and I get a highlight. There's quite a lot of videos about this. This is another one. I don't know. What, I must have been. I must have been doing it, and then going to do the book. Uh, obviously, I started something. Um, this is another one. The se exact same color. So that purple and that orange. When you activate it one way and then another, you get this. So that's not activated, and that's activated. Um, that's peerless. I can tell because I love these two colors my favorite I think one's peacock and one's butterfly blue um playing with three colors the rule of three that was another experiment I haven't finished that one actually that's quite naughty um so there's so many different things you can do with with one kind of thing oh Shana says escape to us uh yes I haven't done a lot in there again um this one, again, I think is peerless. This was playing with pastel. And again, love working like that. Absolutely love working like that. Um, I have to go watch my, my videos because when I stop the video, I don't go back to it, which I should do, really. Um, this is another one, scratching colour in and then activating it. Don't think I've done any more. This I had a blob. Yes, I'm doing that one the same way. That one I'm working and from paper. Anything that's water-based or a water-based crayon or pencil with good quality pigment, you can scratch on a bit of extra wet strength paper and you 
use it as a palette and it will never disintegrate you just kind of re-scratch it and that's the basis of my my color book my my watercolor book i think that might be all this one is definitely peerless i just love the colors again touch and go i love touch and go it's so easy Oh, Kenny says, yes, you were. You wanted to colour it in and then activate it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I'm glad somebody's got a brain. <laughs> thank you. Yes. Um, thank you, darling. Yeah, I'd forgotten about the pens, but we spent our weeks in, with giant carry bags carrying all the stuff up. Um, and I found lots of other things as well. So, again, really think that this time we've got to be on our own or we, we've got to stay in. Uh, yeah, I can I can do that. No problem. <laughs> so apologies. I can't remember what that is. And people keep telling me and I keep forgetting. I think this moment might be again, always practice with the front bit. Any bit of any bit that's about color it. This looks like peerless. Peerless are blendable they, they you they are the best and hydras i have to say love love my peerless and my my they're so vibrant and yet you can take them to almost nothing i absolutely love them uh really do um there are vid videos on all these there's nothing i've done i don't think that there isn't this is pastel and i've scratched it but not activated it now when you scratch pastel it's it's dusty but once you've acted it activated it with a, a damp brush a barely damp brush it becomes set uh, that's pastel i'm pretty sure and it's set and again the pastel is so strong because you've very little binder um but as i say peerless i have to say now one of these there's a blob somewhere bear with me a second i was doing something and i had a blob i think it was a different book um bear with me bear with me because you can see the the blob now i put peerless on that but that's not peerless that is the purple blob and look at that i i've really got very excited about that baby a second just have to shut this all up and get rid of it for a minute um really did love that that would have been washed away so i was working on something and it must be one of these books um that's pastel that's the first pastel i did this is when it gave me the edit this is pastel so you can scratch three colours together and blend them with a blob. Absolutely love these colours. This was the one I was doing with these. And again, oh, God, so excited. Paints, paint pens. They're dried, per oh, oh, permanent. But when you put a little bit on a, on a dish and water it down, you can work with it. So I was floating along, I did the butterfly and I had a blob. I, I was doing this and I was doing a little bit of colour, you see there, and then activating with a brush straight away. And I had a blob. So there was a big blob there and there was a massive blob. I think there's a video, actually. So if we find the video for Daydreams by Hannah Carlson with the Derwent graphic liner pens, um, you will see the video and you will see the blob. And I thought, so I had a blob. I had a pen that was completely covered in ink that was going to be wiped away and, and lost. Oh, thank you, Dada. Thank you. So I had a complete, um, I had a complete blob. So, I put the pen here and got rid of it. But before I did that, I used the end of the pen and thought, right, I'm not going to waste this. I put this to one side and held the pen, which hasn't got a blob at the minute, but you see the very, very blobby. 
and I took, I don't think it was the water brush, it might have been, but I took the brush, touched it, and then did this. And I did it until it was all clean. There was nothing left at all on here. It was gone back to all the ink, all the graphic liner painter uh, colour had gone. I put the lid on it. You see, that's the blob. That was the tail end of the blob. And then I touched most of the blob on here and I worked from here. And I ended up doing this page. And then, I mean, most normal people would have wiped it and pushed and wiped everything away. But that became then a monochrome, which I'd never done before. Um, and then I think I was doing this one as well. No, I started that with a blob. And so then I had another blob. I had another blob. I did. I had another blob. This is before my news resolution two years ago to start at the beginning of books because you forget pages. So I had another, I'm sure I had another blob. I had another blob. And these are some of my favourite pages because of the blob. And I can't find them. <laughs> Typical, typical. There's one in red and there's one in pink. It's definitely Hannah Carlson. Maybe because that one was dry. Um, I will go through this book. Um, I had another purple blob and I would never have particularly liked to colour that one in, but decided I've got a blob, I'm going to do it. Um, that was the other blob. Again, I worked a lot in the purple and you get blobs, but I still like it. It's still a nice page, even though it was because I'd mis made a mistake on another one. I hope that makes sense. Um, there are a couple of others. I'll do a quick flip through this one because I can remember some things. This is a red blob. So I thought, OK, it's a red blob. I'm going to use it. So this was touching the brush and moving one way and moving another. And I used up what would normally be wasted and came up with something that I wouldn't have done originally, if that makes sense. So sometimes, uh, again, I've I learned to take the purple from the darkest to the palest and I really like these monochromed ones that was another one I had a pink blob there and then I've gone back to finish it off now this wasn't uh, this was another one where I had the blobs because this is made with these pink and the colors are just wow um they are really wow um and as I said I wouldn't have done it this is another one that I did with these colors and I learned not to get a blob. <laughs> I'd learned by that. I'd learned by that not to get a blob. Um, that was another one. And then I decided to splash it a bit because I had a bit of a splash, some speckles. And if you can pick up the speckles on there. So I really, really, really enjoyed making a complete pig's ear of the other one because I did this. Okay, so she remembers me doing it. Thank you. Um, so there's another one. I had a blue blob. I had, I think you had the blob there actually, and decided make it into a monochrome. And actually, I love that page, and it's got one colour. Um, and yes, these they've changed the page now, they don't make this anymore because of the blob, although it was meant to be blob, it's meant to be used. These are meant to be used on watercolour paper or some kind of and splashing and dropping and blibbing and smudging and doing I wanted to use them in my colour book um, and it was quite difficult because they weren't designed for that but then as I say I had the accident um, and these are the same colours I mean the colours are just awesome absolutely amazing and this is when I was doing two colours 
one way and another color another way this is where i was trying with um taking the colors with another color um and you can play like that if it's a page you don't particularly like play with it because if you make a mess of it it doesn't matter whereas the nicer ones that you love you don't want to make a mess of so i will do a quick flick so i didn't actually go back to finish this but again love these colors but i think derwent have brought out some liner pens and i think i might have i might have to uh I might have to make a purchase because it's a derwent and i'm a derwent nut and i know how to use these liner pens and you can also use them for your journaling as well. So I think that might be in the pipeline. This is pastel. But once you've activated it with a damp brush, it becomes set. Um, these are the Derwent Graphite Tint. But I didn't advertise them much too much because they were so difficult to work with. Because they're not designed to be used in a colour book. I'm just quite awkward that way. Um, this is another one where I've scratched and left it um most of this it's it's filled in but it's not activated these are the peerless peerless watercolors are oh, absolutely awesome and unfortunately it cost me twice as much to get them delivered than it does to buy them so i can't get any more i'm really gutted about that but absolutely love the peerless love them from practically nothing to the darkest colours. Again, that was my blobby blob blob mess. Now, this is interesting. I love this. This is done with Derwent Ink Tense Blocks. I scratched a little bit of colour and activated it with a damp brush. And I absolutely love these to think how big and chunky the blocks are. I love the fact that I got these beautiful, delicate, pale colours from a scratch of a very chalky block. And again, the colours are just amazing. So that was one of my favourite pages. I've mastered it a little bit better, but still love the fact that the intense blocks are so vibrant, but yet you can take them to a beautiful pale colour. I do start things and then I get waylaid. No idea. I don't recognise these colours. They're beautiful, but I don't recognise them. Probably Derwent watercolour pencils. I've recently gone back to those. Um, this could be near colour twos. There is a video on that. And I left this page to last and then I messed it up. So I'm not a happy girl about that one. It looks like ink tense blocks, actually, probably because of the deepish colours. Yes, Kenny, the, the, the peerless. Um, but having said that, this is a is a page that I managed to do with these graphic pens, but they don't make them anymore. Um, this was a very full on color. I think this is the one with a blob. I think there's a blob. These are. Yes, if you look, it's over there. These are from this set as well. And there's a pink blobby mistake somewhere. I made a pink blobby mistake. Um, but there, again, there's quite a few color, uh, quite a few videos of these. I think this one is that as well. Again, I'd, I'd mastered it by then. Realize you touch the tip of the pen, you don't make a blob. Um, that was because the blob was yellow and then I moved it somewhere else. So I've got this beautiful soft color from these really vibrant yellows. I couldn't waste it, so I popped it there uh, to go back to these were the colors when i was trying to mix two or three together to blend the colors so sometimes it's quite nice to play again that was my blob my pink blob this one is uh, there's a video on this i think this one is ink tense pencils i think i've scratched it first and then i've activated it so if you've got children if you're gonna have children at home for a, a long time go and you don't want them to play with your near color twos or your expensive pencils that are water based, scratch the color in and give them a pot of water and a brush and they can then activate the color and then they can see it come to life. Um, I don't know what that one is. That was another blob. And again, never thought I would like working 
in monochrome. That's taking, I say, the blob, and I might think there might be a video on that one. Uh, that was another one I started, but then realized that you end up with more blobs than you do actual colors. These are mistakes. These are blobs where I've just, instead of throwing it away, had to color quickly because if it dries, it's done. Um, I'm hoping that there's two different line of pens from Graf from Derwent. I'm hoping um, to decide which one I want that I can use as water-based. I think they are. This one is pastel. I think that one's pastel. There is a video on that one. Again, that's a blob mistake. This is one of the first ones I did in this book, or the very first. This is pastel. I'm pretty sure this is pastel. Um, and pastel's lovely because you just wanted a little tiny bit and then you're away. That looks like uh, peerless. But graffiti, uh, this is peerless as well. This beautiful colour here and this one. I think this is peacock peacock blue butterfly wing or something I think and then this one is the blue love and I didn't go back to it I wrote a note to color it in actually I might do that that needs doing because it's not finished so all this should be purple it should all be purple but again the video finished and been a little while um yeah I think I have to go back and finish these that's another thing that I've got to do that looks like um peerless again and then I got into pastels. I got back into my pastels and started playing with three colours that are next to each other on the colour wheel. So you've got you've got yellow, red, and orange. Uh, yellow, orange, and red. Or you've got red, uh, an orange red, um, a pinky red, and a purple. So there's three colours next to each other. Um, and I started playing about, again, a page I wouldn't normally colour because I don't like colouring mushroom pages because of my mushrooms, um, but quite like doing that. Now, it's not activated at the top. The background isn't activated, but the frog, the frog and the flower, everything else is activated, but not the background. Again, another page that I would probably practice. This is, um, this could be Hydrus, this one, Peerless or Hydrus. They're both fantastic colours. Uh, Peerless is so easy because it is. Uh, that's another one that I've scratched in colour and activated. I don't know what that one is. That's my blobby. Um, that might be. Again, they're very underrated. I might play with those again. Love them, but I didn't want everybody to go out and buy loads of things. Love this one. I'm doing the three colours or three tones of one colour, but I um, can't remember how I did it. <laughs> I'm going to have to watch the video for that. Again, another blob, another blob. Oh, and I do have big mistakes. So... We all have, we all have mistakes. Um, this one looks like uh, peerless again. Look at these gorgeous colours. It's either peerless or hydrous. I remember doing that. There's a video on that, and I've forgotten what it is. I shall have to look that one up because again, love those colours. Taking two colours, the the different way. That's what I was trying to do there which gave me the idea for doing others. Um, pretty sure that's peerless. Again, I love the peerless colours because you can you can take them from very dark to very light. It's one colour. It's just one colour on the end of your brush. Um, and this is the technique I've been doing a bit today. The darker, move somewhere else, move somewhere else, come back, go somewhere else. And think of light, but go somewhere else and come back. And that's the touch system that I used when I was with the stroke is with the roses. Go one way and go, and go back the other. Has anybody got any questions? Um, love this one. Can't remember how I did it, which means it's probably something else. This one looks like near colour twos. 
I think this looks like near color too. Again, so well pigmented, scratch a bit and push it up and you can get some beautiful highlights, some really lovely highlights. I hope that's coming, coming through. Can't see very well that moment. Um, but really love doing that. And if you love doing it, it's it's doing what it wants. Again, I had a blob, then I had a purple blob, so I went back. But I don't like it as much as if I'd done it one colour. But it's a work in progress, is that? Um, I started that, and I don't know what it is. It looks like it looks like Derwent Ink Tense Blocks, um, and that's quite a soft little one as well, which I might have to go back to. That one looks like. Ink tense pencils or ink tense blocks could be where you just scratch one corner of the square block and you just keep going and then you just activate it with a gentle brush outwards and you get the softest watercolor effect. And then that was the practices again end pages, beginning pages, just have a bit of a practice. Um, so I'm I'm probably always going to do this light to dark because it happens to be the way the brush works. Um, having said that, kind of really love these beautiful bright colours. But I, I wanted to show that you can use whatever you've got and still get almost the same effect. You know, this is pastel. Um, as long as the pastel's good quality pigment, anything that's water-based and it's good quality pigment, you can do that. Um, yeah, I put, I put peerless there. So that is peerless, that one, whereas this one is a mistake from a blob of colour that I didn't want to waste. Um, this one looks like the peerless one. And the thing about the peerless one is it really is touch and go it really is so easy and so nice to do yes it's not a masterpiece yes it's not it's not um dramatic enough it's not but it's a joy to do and and that's how i i when i'm doing my artwork it's not a joy it's a chore i like doing it but it's it takes all the skills i have but when i'm coloring i'm de-stressing and there's a difference we can still be artistic, but we are not stressing over, oh, my goodness me, it's not perfect. Um, I, showed the, the, I showed the portrait of Alfie. That, that's completely different. There I have to concentrate. I have to be in the right frame of mind. But this is just picking up what I happen to have out of the time. I normally do things for everybody else, but I... I I used to get a bit upset that every so I've got I've gone and bought that. If you haven't got any, then it's a good idea. But this is why I was going to not get all my things out purely because I don't want people to go out and buy loads of things. I, the idea is let's be frugal over this period of time. But if you don't have any water based products, get the best you can. And this little set from Windsor Newton will last quite a few years and we'll get you through most of what you want to do in a colour book. Oh bye Darla, have a lovely day, thank you for stopping by. Um, I'm not sure who comes on and who doesn't anymore so apologies for YouTube uh, going off on a tangent <laughs> but if you watch my videos you normally know it's a bit of a waffle. And my coffee's gone cold. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know how much these are anymore, these Derwent pastel pencils, but um, you, know, you, you can use the touch and go system. Um, let me just do this really quickly. Uh, what should we do? We'll do something really quick. And to show you that if you've got crayons, pastels and pencils as long as they are water-based 
uh, you can you can use them. So let's just pick a page. Um, I don't like doing faces. I'm a bit funny about faces. And oh, I think this one is the the Christmassy one, the seasons one, isn't it? Now these are quite small spaces, but let's see what we can do. So we'll just get rid of those for the minute. I'll come back to those in a second. So thanks for joining me, guys. I just thought I'd show you that if you only have, if you only have oh, this silly water brush, I say this silly water brush, that came out completely wrong, guys. If you only have a water brush, Um, so let's activate it and squeeze it. My hands don't work. Ah, I think that's got something going. You can feel it clunk. So we're damp now. Don't want to be too damp though. So let's have a look. Right. So let's pick a very vibrant purple. And you see how strong that is. So we go to one side, go somewhere else, go somewhere else. 